world today, there are many ways to fall from grace and to go astray. We should realize that in our lives we can make a change for a brighter بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate All praise and thanks uh, are due to Almighty Allah and the, peace and the peace and the blessings are upon His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the last messenger Dear viewers everywhere, I greet you with the greeting of peace Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Peace be unto all of you Remember, the theme of uh, uh, this episode is similar to, uh, or the same theme that we have been talking about in the last uh, uh, episodes, which is the two options. And really it talks about a very important issue for all of us, uh, which is that all our life we confront some situations, we confront some problems, we are facing uh, some uh, options in front of us and we need to all the time uh, to follow one option which is option number one because as we know that option number one is the embodiment of or the essence of it is uh, obeying Almighty Allah and obeying His Messenger. And the other option of course which is option number two as you know that it's disobedience. The essence of it is disobedience. It may look like this when you look at it from the first sight, but when you reflect upon it and you think of it, you will find that really it falls here. Today's example is a little bit different from all the previous examples because apparently you may think that the two options that you have fall into option number one. You may think that if you become creative, or if you want to add something because you love it, or you think that it brings you closer to Allah, you would do it thinking that it brings you closer to Allah, thinking that this is a kind of obedience, and its essence is not. Its essence it does, makes it fall into this category. The famous example here, I'll talk about this example first, so we would understand it, then, then we an- analyze it. At the time of the Prophet wasallam, three people came to the Prophet وسلم, and said to him, the first one said that, I pray every night, all the night. He's talking about night prayer. The second one said, I fast all my lifetime. Every day I fast, every day I fast, every day I fast. The third one, he said, I keep away from women. That means that I don't marry women. All of those thinking that when they do these things, they are doing something good that would bring them closer to Almighty Allah, that makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love them more and more. Then the Prophet said this golden statement, which is really can solve hundreds and thousands of problems that are happening nowadays among the Muslims. And I hope everyone would pay close attention to this statement. The Prophet ﷺ said, I will say the statement after his response. He said that, as for me, I pray some nights and take rest. So I don't pray all the night, I pray part of it and take rest the other part. And I don't pray every night. So this is the golden rule of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, okay, this is the example. The second one, he said that I sometimes fast some days and don't fast other days. I don't fast all the year round. I fast some days and I don't fast other days. And the third one, he said that I marry women. And his answer, of course, is a response to the third one who said that I don't marry women. So the, as, as some people did, the, the monks or the nuns, Right, They used to do this, and this is an exaggeration. This is going beyond the limits. And the Prophet ﷺ said this golden statement, 
This is my sunnah. فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي This is my sunnah. And whoever dislikes this sunnah is not from me. It not, does not belong to Muslims. Oh, it's a very, very important statement and so significant and essential in our life. If you reflect upon this, because this, when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said this or did anything, this is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So any addition to it or deletion from it or change in it, as if you are changing the whole religion, and here your excuse or your justification is that I just love this. I got used to it. Whatever your excuse is, is not acceptable. Period. Whatever the excuse is, is not accepted. And this is the source of bid'ah. This is known as innovation in the religion. When you add something, when you delete something, when you modify something in the religion, you are deforming and defaming and distorting the religion. This is the essence of it. Or indirectly, you are telling Muhammad wasallam, I know something better than you. I know something that you didn't know. And this is impossible to be in the religion. You may know more than Muhammad wasallam in other things. You may know more than him in computers or any other thing. But you don't know about religion as much as he knows. Otherwise, this religion, the second message is, this religion is incomplete. And this contradicts with the verse in the Quran, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, Today, I completed the religion for you. So when somebody comes and does something in the religion, whether adding to it or modifying it or changing to it, that means that the religion is not complete and it needs to be completed by this person or that person. Oh, now, you say that this is the first time for me I perceive it that way. I never looked at it from this perspective. This is how every Muslim and Muslimah should look at the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. If the Prophet ﷺ did something, so don't add to it or don't delete from it unless you have a proof that the Prophet ﷺ did that thing that you are planning to do. Now, these three companions, these three people who came to the Prophet ﷺ and explained the situation, they thought that they are doing something good. For example, nowadays you will find people are celebrating the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ out of love or out of passion or out of imitating other people, or being affected by the culture they live in, they try to do this. And we don't have a single evidence in the life of the Prophet ﷺ that he celebrated his own birthday. And this kind of act, of course, falls clearly under the bid'ah, under the innovation. And I'm quite sure that every Muslim that knows, every Muslim knows that, any type of innovation leads to deviation and leads to hellfire. This is how dangerous an issue of changing in the religion, particularly in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, because most people know that the Qur'an is very clear and all the people understand the Qur'an or the majority of the Muslims understand the Qur'an or the majority of the scholars understand the Qur'an and they go to the sunnah because lots of people nowadays unfortunately don't speak about the sunnah and its importance and significance in our life. That's why they try to find excuses with the sunnah. They try to keep themselves away from the Qur'an as much as they can. So as if it is not as important as the Qur'an. In fact, it is. No Muslim can be a good Muslim without following the Qur'an and the Sunnah at the same time. You cannot separate between them because the Sunnah is the explanation and the, ta- and the details of the Qur'an. I said in the beginning that this example that I'm saying today is a little bit different from the other examples because apparently those people who did these acts and did extra good deeds, they thought that they fall into this category. 
the category of option number one. So it's a very tricky one. It's not clear that falls here and there. But when they reflect and they contemplate and when they are in trouble, they need to learn this lesson. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ Ask the people who have knowledge. If you are in doubt, leave it out. Until you get clear answer from the people of knowledge, then do it. And when I say that, when you ask those people who have knowledge, I'm saying that not just take their opinions, but take the evidence when they say something to you. You have to get the evidence in your hand before you act. Once you get the evidence and you are quite sure that this evidence is solid, follow the scholars who will explain this to you. Here again, I would advise everyone to be very cautious in adding something or in doing something or deleting something from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ because if they do so, they are deleting something from the religion. I hope I made it clear to everyone and I'm reminding everyone there is no way for us to access paradise unless we follow the steps of the Prophet ﷺ, not to follow our own desire and our liking and our own whims. It doesn't work that way. It works only when we follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And I ask Allah to guide us all. And until we meet again, again I again remind you of Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is Mamdouh Nuruddin Muhammad. In this world today, there are many ways. To fall from grace and to go astray, we should realize that in our lives we can make a change.